a wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to discuss a relatively exciting paper coming out of Japan that discovers something really unusual and potentially groundbreaking. When it comes to underwater structures, we usually refer to as hydrothermal vents. The bizarre fountain-like formations that spew out huge amounts of material, creating extremely diverse environments from extremely deep locations in a lot of different oceans, while at the same time providing extremely unusual environments for all sorts of life to call home. But much more interestingly, for several decades now, certain scientists proposed that this could also be the major source of initial life on planet Earth. Or in other words, these potentially served as the location where most life initially formed. Or at least parts of life, especially things like amino acids and even potentially cell structures. And that's because in these locations, there's just a lot of chemical reactions and a lot of biological conditions that don't really exist anywhere else on the planet, but do exist inside of us. And so it's always been a little bit intriguing to find out if there is actually any connection to the origins of life when it comes to these very strange structures. And though previously this hypothesis was, despite being interesting, not widely accepted, in this new study by Hyeun Lee and the team from Japan, researchers do discover something super intriguing that's actually been hypothesized several decades ago. Here's actually one of the recent press releases that sort of piqued my interest when I read this. Nanostructures in the deep ocean hint at life's origin. And that's technically what this study is all about. A discovery of really unexpected and somewhat bizarre structures inside these hydrothermal vents that kind of hint at what might be the origin of life. But I guess let's start with the obvious. Even after decades and decades of research, we actually still have absolutely no idea where and how life formed on Earth. But the most accepted proposition is kind of related to the idea known as the primordial soup. The idea that back in the days, possibly inside some kind of a lake or maybe inside some kind of a shallow sea, we essentially had this huge amounts of elements interacting chemically with each other, which when combined with things like for example UV radiation, things like lightning and possibly a lot of chemical reactions resulted in the production of first primitive life. But exactly where and how this happened is of course unknown. We have no idea what kind of a body of water this would be or what's even required to make this happen. But naturally there were a lot of additional ideas and so as a result eventually scientists started to look for other places that might provide life a chance to evolve. And while well, these hydrothermal vents are potentially one of these locations. They only exist because Earth is geologically active and also because it has a lot of liquid water. And interestingly, compared to the rest of the seafloor, especially at these depths, and usually this is about 3 to 5 kilometers in depth, these locations are extremely biologically productive. Here because of all of the chemicals dissolved in the water and all of the liquid that's vented through these tubes, the conditions become perfect for a lot of life to survive and to thrive for a very, very long time. So for example, in a typical hydrothermal vent, the organism density is anywhere from 10,000 to 100,000 times greater than any surrounding seafloor. But these places become even more exciting when you start studying the chemistry. For example, when it comes to pH conditions, this is one of very few places on Earth that provides a perfect pH for potential life to begin billions of years ago. The water conditions around these vents also seems to be perfect to synthesize various molecules important for life. For example, certain types of vents, such as the alkaline vents, seem to be extremely productive when it comes to forming organic molecules. And that's extremely different from pretty much anywhere else in the oceans, and of course different from a typical shallow sea or some kind of a shallow lake. And so interestingly, a lot of different particles inside these vents tend to act like catalysts and even have very similar properties to enzymes able to create very simple organic molecules such as methanol and even formic acid extremely efficiently. So essentially they produce a lot of compounds required for pretty much all life. And so decades ago, one of the first propositions was that maybe amino acids actually formed here and eventually became distributed through oceans by various currents with additional research proposing that even things like peptides or primitive cells could have formed here as well. Mostly because the abundance of various minerals and various materials was just extremely different from anywhere else. For example, there's also abundance of methane and ammonia that we believe was technically absent 
from the surface of the planet when life initially formed. And so essentially, the hypothesis behind hydrothermal vents as the source of origin of life explain how various cells would evolve in different ways impossible for the primordial soup hypothesis, especially when it comes to obtaining energy. And so after decades of research, these structures represented the only known environment on the planet that basically contained a bit of everything needed for organic molecules and complex cell structures to form. But there was a problem. Pretty much most of this was just a hypothesis. Now there were of course some simulations or even lab experiments trying to prove this, but there were just no physical observations of how any of this could be possible. And that's maybe, I guess, until now. And so let's actually discuss what was discovered in this paper and how it directly relates to previous propositions. And this kind of connects to a proposition referred to as chemiosmotic gradient. Or as the name implies, a physical gradient that starts to act as a kind of an ion pump, usually involving the ions of hydrogen and extremely similar to what we usually have inside our cells. And so here a while back, and specifically something like two decades ago, one of several papers, in this case by William Martin and Michael Russell, proposed that various vents actually produced perfect alkaline conditions to form a kind of a natural, abiogenic, hydrogen-based pump. A pump ideal for creating conditions that can then concentrate organic molecules, basically forming a kind of a precursor to a typical cell. And here this would be something established right after the formation of Earth, possibly within just a few hundred million years, and would suddenly provide suitable environment for a lot of cells to start developing. And that's because these formations would be somewhat similar to much more complex ion channels that we possess in our cells. Here we're talking about proteins, whose only purpose is to pump something into the cell or out of the cell in order to maintain some kind of a gradient. And so these naturally occurring proton gradients were proposed to be possible and to exist around various vents. And according to this hypothesis, they could have served as a kind of an early cell wall and of course early proton pump in many initial organisms that just started evolving. But it's cool to have an idea and a hypothesis, where is the proof? And so now, two decades later, researchers exploring one of the deepest regions on the planet, the Mariana Trench, analyzed a group of hydrothermal vents at a depth of 6,000 meters or 20,000 feet. And while to their surprise, discovered bizarre nanostructures that seemed to be all over the vents. Here, by collecting various samples, they discovered bizarre plate-like crystals approximately 100 nanometers in size, that were actually assembled into a much thicker membrane, which served as a kind of a pathway for a lot of hot water to pass. But inside these membranes, they also discovered bizarre stripe patterns, roughly around 200 to 400 micrometers in size, that allowed these structures to suddenly become very efficient ion transport pumps. And interestingly, this was actually inside a sample approximately 80 centimeters in size, with the entire sample essentially covered in these structures. And so when they analyzed the structure, they discovered that first of all, it actually produced just a little bit of a voltage, which is exactly what happens inside our cells as well. Because these pumps create a gradient, this gradient also produces voltage. That's of course how, for example, electrical impulses in our brains are produced even right now. But surprisingly, there was nothing organic about this. Not a single organic material was detected, and everything here was entirely mineral-based. So here the energy was generated through a process of osmosis. But because these were also selective ion channels, or they were basically only letting through some of the stuff, filtering a lot of things in the process, it only made them resemble typical cells even more. And so in essence, here researchers discovered a spontaneous formation of ion channels that seems to be entirely inorganic and functions very similar to typical cells and not so different from initial predictions over two decades ago. Here this whole sample was made out of magnesium hydroxide, whose crystals organized in extremely straight channels, which then controlled the flow of liquid. And by itself this was a super bizarre discovery, and technically a discovery important for at least two fields. The first one is obviously the origin of life. So here for biologists this is a really important confirmation that osmotic energy conversion, extremely important for most modern life, can definitely form abiotically in very specific geological environments. Naturally, because we know these formations very likely exist on Europa, Ganymede, and possibly even as far as Pluto, this is also a super important discovery for the field of astrobiology. 
And so by discovering this bizarre chemical synthesis system, we might have come a few steps closer to answering the question of the origin of life. But on top of this, since there was a little bit of voltage generated here as well, this is also important for another field, a field referred to as blue energy harvesting. Clean, renewable and long-term sources of energy, very often by using the process of osmosis and various manufactured membranes. This is actually an entirely new field and is not that developed yet, but it does provide us with a new way to generate energy super cheap, very efficiently and using very clean sources. And so here we might have just discovered another way how osmosis can provide this energy without the use of anything super complicated. And so in this case, by copying what's happening here and generating the same crystals, we can maybe find a way to generate energy without the use of anything but water. So yeah, definitely a super exciting project, an extremely exciting discovery, but something we'll discuss a little bit more because there have been so many different discoveries on the potential origin of life in the last few months. And so once something else is discovered really soon, or I guess once I finish the video I'm making right now on a different intriguing proposition, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.